So good evening. My name is Stephanie Sepiel and I serve as an alumni engagement officer here at Valparaiso University. We're thrilled to welcome you to Finding Your Footing in Freelance, the second in a series of alumni experts virtual events sponsored by the Office of Alumni Engagement. Our presenter today, Danny carter Evans, graduated from Valpo twice, first in 2006 with a degree in English and a minor in Gender Studies. She then obtained her Master of Arts in Liberal Studies with a concentration in English in 2008. Danny, who also serves as secretary on the Valparaiso University Alumni Association Board of Directors, currently works as a Christian women's motivational speaker, coaching clients in both health and wellness and business building. On top of that, she is the host of the Taking Back You MomCast, a podcast for millennial moms, and is a certified fitness trainer specializing in dance, yoga, and Pilates. She and her husband, Jim, also a graduate of the VU graduate program, live in Indianapolis with their son, Alex, and their dog, Benji. And just as a side note, Danny is one of our most dedicated and passionate alumni volunteers, and I'm so glad to be able to, to chat with her here today um, and share her expertise with all of you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Participants, Kathy, it's just you at the moment, so I'm speaking to you. Um, <laughs> please feel free to use the chat to ask questions of the guests, or you can unmute and just ask them. Uh, we'll get to them throughout the 30 minute program. This program is also being recorded, so you'll be able to watch a replay on the Velpo Alumni YouTube channel. And you find that just by searching for our name, Velpo Alumni. Um, I'll start off with the first question. So Danny, what made you decide to enter the world of freelance work and how did you find your niche? Well, you know, um, I decided to go out on my own after years of helping someone else build their own dream and realizing that I was not taking the time to focus on my own. Um, and, I, and I also had a lot of people in my life, my friends, my family, uh, co-workers that were asking me for advice in kind of a lot of you know, like the same topics. Um, and, and they were health and wellness and business building, um, fitness and all those things. And I realized I'm like, hey, I think I might have something here. Um, and I always knew that, you know, I, I'm, I'm a performer, I'm a dancer. I've been a dancer since I was three years old. I've always been um, able to, you know, speak in front of a crowd and talk to people. And so it was just kind of a natural transition to take all of that knowledge that I had um, floating around in my head and kind of hone it in and use it to teach other women what I knew. When you get started, uh, you know, once you have found that topic with which you can, you know, really instruct others and offer a valuable service, how do you, how do you get started, right? How do you, you know, find a brand and how do you market that brand and your expertise as part of that brand? Um, and then once you get started, how does that evolve throughout your, your time, you know, offering that service? So, so I did a few things when I started because I really started, you know, kind of with a blank slate and I didn't really know, I knew what I wanted to do, but I didn't know how I was going to do it. And the other thing is that I was kind of thrust into what I do now. And I mean that because uh, there were a lot of, you know, circumstances that kind of all fell into a place, into place that allowed me to be where I am now. So I did my first speaking engagement because um, a leader at church basically dropped the ball. And so I ended up stepping in for them, like literally 30 minutes before <laughs> the event was supposed to happen. So I ended up speaking for them like, oh, okay, I guess I speak now. Um, and, you know, like I said, I had friends that would come to me and say, hey, I'm trying to figure this out. Can you do this? And I would say, yeah. And then I would do it for them. And then finally I thought, well, like, why am I doing this for everybody else? And why am I not doing it for myself? So what I had to do was figure out what am I actually trying to do? And I, and I figured out my love, my absolute love is for moms. Um, I went through a lot in my early stages of, of motherhood, um, a lot of anxiety and depression and, and things like that. And so I, you know, in talking to other moms, I'm also a big part of Mops International. I do a lot of volunteer work with them as well, which is mothers of preschoolers, if you're not familiar with it. 
Um, and, and talking to other moms, I found out that I wasn't alone. And I think that was that was kind of the catalyst for everything is, is this whole message that we're not alone. So what I did was I started with, I call it my umbrella. And I said, okay, what am I going to take under my umbrella, the uh, umbrella of Danny Carter Iddens? And the first thing I realized was that right there, that Danny Carter Iddens is the brand. I am the brand. Um, and so when people are listening to me or, or, or not listening to me or whatever, they're doing that because there's something about me that they like or something about me that they um you know, find a connection with. And so I realized that was my first thing was to, you know, kind of not hide behind a logo or um, like, you know, people get stuck in on, on, oh, what's my business name? I realized like I was the brand and, and the people, people who were listening to me were doing that because of me. So I had to figure out what I wanted to offer people who were going to listen to me speak, um, whether it was in person or via my podcast or, you know, if they, whatever they were looking for. And my, my main things are to empower women, um, to support them, to provide education, and then finally to provide community. Um, and, and so those were the things I, I really just kind of made those my pillars under, you know, kind of the umbrella of who I am and what I do. Um, and, and it really just started from there. And, and it doesn't matter what I do or um, you know, really who I'm talking to, those are my main things that I always try to get in there, to empower, to support, to educate, and to you know, create a community for people to jump in um, and, and work with each other. Excellent. Um, as you started to kind of build that you know that brand out there that that you just l announcing hey i'm here this is what I, this is my expertise this is what i can help you do um you know there's obviously you know visual elements to that did you do a lot of your own creative work did you outsource that or i did everything on my own and probably that was i could i could give a big shout out to VU for that. Um, a professor who, who passed away some years ago, Professor Ann Reiser, she actually taught us um, HTML. She taught us all these like crazy things back in like 2000, whatever year. And <laughs> we don't need to say what year it was in 2000, but it, it, it was this century, I'll say that. And um, she taught us a lot of, she taught me like so many things like HTML, all these things that I, you know, she's telling me this, you know, 15 years ago, and I'm thinking, okay, thanks, I'm never going to need this. And then guess what? I needed it. Um, and so it was really nice not to be able to, not to have to start from scratch with doing all those things. And then also, um, you know, I use Canva. If you've never heard of it, canva.com is an amazing resource for graphic design, for doing your own graphic design. I made um, pretty much everything that I have on social media, as far as graphics, or quotes, or uh, even my logo. I made it all on Canva myself. Um, and I definitely say, if it's something that you feel comfortable using, I would totally use it. If it's not something that you feel comfortable using, I know a lot of people have had success with Fiverr, um, Upwork, going on there to see if they can find someone who will help them create their you know, um, logo, branding, all of that kind of stuff. But I did it all myself. I think I'm, I'm crazy that way. I am very much, um, oh, I'll just do it. I'll do it. And what's funny is that as I've gone along, um, I, I kind of hit a point and I'm hitting a point I'm, I'm, I'm talking myself into it where I'm realizing like, I think I might need like someone to help me, <laughs> but you know, you know, it's the, it's the mom and me and the woman in me. It's going to probably take me a few more months before I actually do something about that. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and I'll I'll plug Canva as well. Um, very user friendly, and you can upgrade to pay tier to, to get access to more materials depending on what you need. Um, but all web based, very user friendly. Um, they even have a, a social posting function yeah. built in now. Um, yes. Yeah, very yeah. cool. And it's only uh, twelve ninety five a month, so it's not like a crazy. Um, you know, and and what's great is it. This is your business. You write that off. That's a right. That's for advertising. You write that off. So um, that's the other kind of thing you have to kind of get past is when you have expenses and things like that. You have to kind of set a goal for how much you want to make, and then figure out okay, well, how am I going to get there and work your way backwards. 
And one of the first things I was afraid uh, of was spending any money towards my business. But then I realized I'm like, you can't make money unless you spend money. It's that's just kind of how it works. And so don't be afraid to, you know, do something like that where you put in $13 a month to make sure that you can now make, you know, all of these visual um, aspects for your business that are going to be important because a lot of people are very visual and they're going to need, you know, they're going to need to see your colors. They're going to need to see, you know, how you express yourself through these, through these visuals. Yeah. And even just to stand out in a sea of, you know, social media marketing, um, you know, at least can be completely free, but because it is free, everybody's on there, you know, so you have to, to make your brand stand out a little bit. Um, so speaking of Canva uh, and apps like Fiverr and things where you can, you know, hire contractors, what are some must have tools of the trade uh, as far as equipment, apps, social media accounts and channels, web assets? What do you consider to be um, those most important elements of marketing your brand and distributing your content? Yes. Oh my gosh. So I have actually uh, a, a huge list of things. Um, and if I had it printed out, I actually showed it to you, but I, I, I can probably send you the link to it if I, if I remember. <laughs> um, but it's, I have a list of basically, if you want to start a business, these are the things that you need, but I'm going to give you uh, just a few of them out of that list right now. The first thing, um, love it or hate it, you're going to need Facebook and Instagram. Sorry. Um, and, and for what I do, I have a business, a, a separate business, Facebook and Instagram, um, a Facebook business page, and then an Instagram business. And then I have my personal and I'm very, um, I'm very protective of what I put on my business page versus my personal page. Um, just, you know, to, to kind of draw that line, you, you want to toe the line with social media where people feel like they know you, they are getting to know you, they're engaging with you, but you also don't want to share, you know, oh, look, here's my child. His name is this. He goes to this school, you know, because it is a, there's a public element to it. Um, so that's my first thing is I would always say, make sure, it, you know, when you're using Facebook and Instagram, always have a business account and a personal and keep them, keep business, business and personal, personal. Um, of course, you need your smartphone, your smartphone, laptop, iPad. Um, I finally, I bit the bullet last year. I was, I was using, I was running my entire business on my smartphone and um, people who are myopic, you understand the, the drama that this brings in. Cause I was literally spending all day like that. So my husband was like, okay, it was actually last cyber Monday, not like a year ago, Monday. Um, and he said, please get yourself a laptop because this is ridiculous. <laughs> so I bit the bullet and I, uh, I got a $900 laptop for like half the price. So, you know, Cyber Monday. Um, but yeah, I would say definitely get a, a laptop or um, iPad or something like that. And, and if you do get an iPad, spring for the Bluetooth keyboard. Mm. Trust me. Um, and and y you're going to wish you're going to wish you had it because it, uh, it it's just it's just easier. Just trust me. It's easier. Um, because I also have a podcast, one of the things yeah. that I live by, my husband happens to, um, have a minor in audio recording. And so I lucked out, he's, he taught me how to edit my own, um, podcast and he got me a microphone that was not too expensive, but was a good brand. And so that's the Yeti blue microphone. Yes. It's very good. Do you have it? You have one. Yay. Yetis. Yes. Oh, that's <laughs> right. I, yep. Yep. That's the same one I have. And um, so that's the, I always tell people if they're, you know, looking to start a podcast or looking to do any kind of thing where they're um, I, voiceover work, whatever you're looking for, Yeti yes. is wonderful. And I know it's good because I, like I said, I'm married to an audio guy who uh, who, who told, he picked it out personally for me. So I know, I know it's good. Um, and, and also zoom, uh, I run, I do a lot of interviews for my podcast. Um, I interview other moms and I'm never, we're obviously with COVID, we are never in the same place. Um, and so, you know, using, using zoom is really cool because you can record it and you can actually record each participants audio on a separate separate stream so then when you need to edit it or put it together you don't have to it doesn't always have to be mushed together you can you know fix each person's um and so yeah that, those are my you know 
those are my tools for recording. I also use Audacity, which is a completely free web-based program. Actually, it's not web-based, you download it, sorry. Yeah. But it's free. Um, and that's what I used to edit. I used to use WavePad. Still, if in a pinch, I will. Um, but I liked Audacity. I thought it had just a lot more features and I couldn't believe it was free, but it is. Uh, my website, I also did on my own, thanks to Professor Riser. She made it, we had to create our own little website, which um, I, that, I just crack up when I think about it. And um, so I use Wix. I, and I've been with Wix since like 2009, like back when they were first starting out, um, when they were like flash, <laughs> like they, it was so bad. Um, but yeah, I, uh, it's funny. I just got an email from them that says my first little flash website that I made with them is now it's going to go away at, in December. So I'm like, Oh, rest in peace. Um, <laughs> goodbye flash. Um, but yeah, that Wix is, is a great resource. It's $10 a month. I, I finally went ahead and paid for the full year. Um, but you can make your own website and I've been doing, that's all I use. Uh, I know some people use, uh, you know, Word, WordPress, some people use Square, any of those. Uh, I, I, I will tell you the one time I did have somebody offer to, you know, kind of design a website for me. And so I said, okay, well, I don't, I'm not saying I'll use you, but show me what you got. I didn't like it. I liked what I had better. So uh, trust yourself. You know, you know you, you know what your your brand is. You can always find somebody to help you put things in the right spot. And that's actually something that I do for people. Um, I will either get them started with the Wix website and kind of help them, you know, get it going, or they will start their Wix website and then they'll have me come in and I'll kind of tweak it for them so it's a little bit more user friendly, a little more visually appealing. Um, but it's something that they can handle on their own and they don't have to keep paying somebody to go in and, you know, tweak it. Um, email marketing. I know there are a ton of email marketing companies that are popping up, but I, I love MailerLite. I was a, um, oh Lord, who is the one that's so big? I just forgotten about them because they changed their prices and I don't even care anymore. The monkey one who, uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You, you know who I mean. Um, yeah. Who cares? They're over. No, no. <laughs> they, you know what they did? They, they, they changed their prices and they changed like how many people you could have, uh, how many emails you could send a month. And it just wasn't, I didn't like that the way they Mailchimp. did it. Mailchimp. There we go. Like the monkey one, Mailchimp. Yes. Um, and so, you know, I didn't really like the way they did that. So I, um, thank you, Kathy, Mailchimp. <laughs> so I, I, I got out of that one and now I use Mailer Light, which is, um, I think it has more features anyway. They're a UK-based brand and they uh, they let you, there's so many features, I can't even go into all the features that they have, but there's a lot of features. I suggest you look into it. It's Mailer Light. it's all one word. And I think um, they, they have a free option and the free option gets you pretty far. And then the next tier is like $10 a month. And I just moved into that. And honestly, when it's the slow season, what's really cool about Mailer Light is they keep all your information. You can downgrade to free when it gets kind of like summer is not really super fast season for me. So I don't send a lot of emails. So I don't really need all those, you know, um, I don't really need that number of emails to be able to send. So I downgrade to the free version in the summer. And then I just go back up to the $10 a month version when I need it. Um, so that that's why I like that. It's very flexible. Canva, we already talked about that. That's my graphic design. Another one is PicMonkey. Um, they've been around for quite a while. I think they actually were around before PicMonkey. And um, the reason I like them is because they do let you do so many editing features to your own pictures. Mm. Uh, so that's kind of what I've used that one for. So both of those are kind of playing in... Um, you know, I kind of switch between them. One that I use on my phone, and I want to make sure I'm using the right word, is, oh yeah, um, Word Swag. And Word Swag is really cool. It's an app on your phone. And you can make really cool uh, graphics, like Word graphics, really quickly that if you need to post something on social media, like in a hurry. Um, my very first logo before I had ever heard of Canva was on Word Swag. I made it on my phone because I, I needed a logo for something. And so I was just like, Annie Carter, there you go. 
Um, so yeah, I love word swag. I still use it uh, as like overlay text on graphics if I need it really quickly. And then the one thing I always tell my, my business building clients is, is and this is uh, a joke, but not really, is that you have to set up a way to get paid. <laughs> and so PayPal or Venmo, those are both things that you can download those right now. You don't need any device uh, besides your cell phone. Um, and you, you don't even need a swiper for any of those things. You just download them and get paid. Um, because one of the funny things, I always have people that, you know, they want to start a business and I go, okay, cool. So do you have an email address? And they go, oh, what? And I go, well, you need a way for people to reach you. And they go, well, I have a website and now I'm getting my web. I'm like, cool, but you need an email address. Like who cares if you have a website? You need a way for people to contact you and you need a way to get paid. Um, and then everything else <laughs> will, you know, kind of fall into place. So, um, I mean, there's, there's tons more I could go into a long list of things, but those are the, those are the, my main, um, kind of my skeleton crew that I, I work with, uh, on a regular basis. So, do you yeah. use paper business cards at all? Um, yes, I do. You know what? I just ran out of some, I missed to print. Those are my, um, I, I keep meaning to, and I should have done it during Black Friday because they always have like amazing sales. Um, and that's my big thing. I'm always looking for a discount, bargain, brand, sale, whatever. Um, oh, what types? Okay, yeah. yeah. Hold on, I will answer that in just a second, Kathy. Um, you know, I'm always looking for those kinds of things. Any time to, you know, cut costs wherever I can, but not necessarily quality. Um, so yeah, I use this to print. And I print those out. I just, I just did a talk uh, two weeks ago and I gave out my last card and I wasn't worried about it because the holidays are coming. So I'm not really doing any talks right now, but um, yeah, I do need to order those. And yes, business cards, they may, may feel old school, but they are fantastic. Um, and I've had, I've had people that will literally email me because they saw my business card at like you know, a church thing. And they, and they were like, Oh, Hey, um, so don't, don't sleep on business cards. They're still happening. <laughs> okay. So Kathy says I'm a freelance writer. Yay. Um, my husband is an English teacher. He's a high school English teacher. And I'm also an English, English major. So we love writers. What types of things do you sell and what does your business consist of? Um, oh, okay. So the things that I sell, so I don't sell physical products. I am a motivational speaker and I am a coach. So basically what I do is I speak to women, mothers mostly, but you know, they, they don't have to be mothers, they can be women. Um, and I help coach them in health and wellness or in um, business building, kind of wherever they're trying to be. Uh, my main thing is to help people get from where they are to where they're trying to be. So that looks different for everyone. Um, so I just kind of allow people to kind of tell me like, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to get to. And then I help them build a plan to get there without necessarily giving them the answers. Um, because giving people the answers is not the same as them coming to the realizations on their own. So I do a lot of um, like motivational interviewing to kind of pull out of them what they are trying to accomplish what's working well, what isn't working well, what has worked in the past, what hasn't. So um, yeah, I, I, I don't have like a physical product that I sell. So most of my work is service oriented. Yeah, that's excellent. And you know, I, you do some writing as well, right? Yeah, I do, I do. Um, I, I do blog, my blog uh, is, 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 is hit or miss um, because I have so many things going on. And so at a certain point, I had to realize there's only so much I can do in a 24 hour time period, um, as well as being a wife and a mom. Uh, and so the blog, when I get to it, so usually what ends up happening is when I do write, they are um, long pieces, but they are things that have been, you know, kind of ruminating for a while. Um, so that's kind of how I, I fix it on that front was to make sure that when I do write something, it is like super thought provoking and has been going running around in my head for a while now. Yeah. Um, how often do I connect with them? It, it's up to them. It's their, it's their schedule. It's their time. Um, some people will ask me 
Um, you know, some people will ask me for ongoing accountability. They'll want me to, they'll want to check in with me once a day. Some people don't want to be bothered. Um, they want me to kind of help them figure out a smart goal. And then they'll work on that for the week or work on that for the month. And then I'll check in, you know, at the end of that time period. And at that point, we'll figure out what worked, what didn't work, and then start another SMART goal. Um, and really, it kind of depends on what people are looking for and how, um, you know, they want to craft it. Because again, I, my goal is not to tell them, this is how I run my program and this is what you will do. Um, because that's usually when pe people uh, go, no, I don't want to do it like that. People want to kind of figure it out on their own um, and figure out what works for them. So I, I try to be pretty flexible to a point. Um, I do, I'm very um, protective of my time. So I let them know when I'm available and what my parameters are, and then they can move through you know, within those parameters. Um, so I, you know, I'm not available at, you know, 1 a.m. because someone's freaking out that their website doesn't, you know, load um, <laughs> or things like that. Uh, I, I do set those boundaries and I, and I would employ, I, I would say anybody, please um, implore anybody to set those boundaries uh, if you are in a coaching role or in a, you know, mentoring role or anything like that. But yeah, um, it, it's really up to the client what they are looking for. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I'm going to ask you one more quick question. I know we're out of time, but I just wanted to ask you, what is the biggest piece of advice you could give to anyone entering or managing the world of freelance? Um, the biggest piece of advice is, you know, that don't be afraid. Don't be afraid um, and, and, and don't, okay, let me, let me, let me back up. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Okay, fine. But here's really what I, what I want you to, to think about. There's um, a lot of people that do what you do. Like, I'm just going to be honest. There's a lot of people that do what you want to do or that do what you do already. But the, it goes back to what I was talking about at the beginning when, you know, I say, but what's your brand? You. You are the brand. And so even though there could be a thousand, there's literally, I mean, Christian motivational, you know, speakers, they're falling out of the woodwork, but none of them, the only, the only Christian motivational speaker um, that's Danny Carter Iddens is, is me. And so don't, you know, think, oh, well, I can't do that because someone's already doing it. Well, yeah, someone's a speaker, someone's a, a motivational speaker, but they're not doing it the way you're doing it. Someone's a, a writer. There's freelance writers all over the place, Kathy, but they're not doing it the way Kathy does it. And so don't, you know, count yourself out and don't be afraid to put yourself out there. One of the, uh, I'll tell you this, one of the tools that helped me tremendously was crafting my elevator pitch. Um, one of the things I found was people would ask me what I did. And I would be like, uh, yeah, I'm a speaker and I have a podcast and I like to help moms and I love people, you know, and, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> it was really difficult for people to kind of take me seriously, for me to take myself seriously, because I didn't have a way of telling them who I am, what I do and what I want. Um, and I think that's really hard for women, especially to, to stand out, say who we are, what we do and what we want. But crafting that elevator pitch is so important. And if you don't know how to do that, you can do a simple Google search and it will give you literally like a template for filling in, you know, I'm Danny Carter Iddens, I'm a Christian women's motivational speaker, you know, and da, 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 da. And you fill it through and you tell them at the end, this is the most important part. Tell them what you want. I always tell them I'm looking for speaking engagements within the church or female, you know, event arena. I tell them what I'm looking for because sometimes people are like, oh, that's nice. You're a freelance writer. Okay. You know, so <laughs> you, you, they want to know what you're looking for, because a lot of times people will have connections and they'll have ways to, you know, um, to bring you in, but they don't necessarily know if that's what you're looking to do. How can someone get in touch with you, Danny, if they'd like to learn more about your business, perhaps to benefit from your services, or just if they have any lingering questions? Um, they can go to dannycarteridens.com. Like I said, um, I, I make everything really easy. If you know my name, you know my website. Um, <laughs> so you can go to dannycarteridens.com or if you want to find me on Facebook or Instagram, 
And to be honest, I have not been on either of those very much these days um, because holidays and everything like that. But um, I'll be back in the game in January. But if you want to see what I've been doing so far, um, you can go to Facebook and Instagram. Both of those, the handle is just at Danny Carter Adams. Um, and you can find me on there. I'm also on Twitter, but I keep forgetting I have a Twitter. So <laughs> I just keep forgetting. I, I'm, I'm trying to get better at it. Um, and and my, um, my former students told me that I should be on Snapchat. And I just don't understand why anybody would want me to be on Snapchat. Um, so <laughs> like, I don't know what I would have to say. So <laughs> Facebook and Instagram are really easy to get in touch with me. You can always message me, even if I haven't posted in a while, I always get back to people right away. That's excellent. Well, thank you, Danny, so much for joining us. We've so appreciated your expertise. Uh, our next alumni experts events will take place in 2021, more details to come. Um, to see upcoming and past Velpo alumni events, visit alumni.velpo.edu slash events. Or you can see replays and snippets on our Valpo alumni YouTube channel. And that's where this video will go once it is edited with all these wonderful tools that we know how to use um, from our time at Valpo, frankly. <laughs> um, I, I know. We, gosh, we learn so much. And that's what I always tell people is like Valpo has literally the most well-rounded education. Um, I, it's like my whenever I talk to parents who are, you know, prospective parents, I just tell them, like, honestly, I learned so many things that I thought at the time, like, why would I need this? And then now I'm like, oh my gosh, like that one thing is something that I'm using 10 years later that I never thought I would. Yep. Yeah. And we hope that you will also follow us on social media to stay connected to exciting news and events, including our 2020 interactive advent calendar. Um, it's at Valpo alumni on Twitter and Instagram and Valparaiso University alumni on Facebook. Thank you so much and have a wonderful evening. Good night.